Okay. Joanne, you have the revised copy, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, Maria gave me the other one. She put an X through it, so okay. I've got it. No problem. Hi. It did. I had the I had the right pages, but I was looking at the wrong year. I was looking at 15 instead of 16. Yeah. Thanks. There's so much that, that can happen, you know. I mean, dead bang on. I mean, if this person has put themselves out. They're going to have to wear it down. And, uh, you know, Smith is a state arrested prosecutor. <laughs> Pull it at her. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, all we know is what the prosecutor is going to for. <coughs> right. One color is fine. She's, she's coming. Not my job. Okay, you, everybody ready? I think our cameraman's ready too. I'd like to call our city council meeting to order and ask everyone to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll, please. Seifert. Aye. Shower. Here. Here. McIver. Here. Marquez. Here. Kenny. Here. Belzac. Here. Belke. Here. Seven present. We have a quorum. <coughs> Let's move to the questions and comments uh, no, uh, uh, time on our ci city council agenda. This is an opportunity for anyone in the audience to address the City Council on any subject matter. It doesn't have to be an item that's on the agenda this evening, but it's an opportunity for uh, residents to, to address the City Council in case you can't stick around for the whole meeting. So I'd like to invite anyone that's in the audience that would like to come up and, uh, and speak to the City Council. back again. <coughs> I'm going to make it real brief. <coughs> I didn't <coughs> have the opportunity to speak to my alderman, Mr. Kenny, here over the weekend, but um, the only reason why I am compelled to come in here, I, sp um, I spoke at length with Dan <coughs> a little over a week ago. The uh, project by AT&T and their subcontractors, as far as I'm concerned, is inferior. They did not restore the property between my driveway and my neighbor's driveway to the condition that it was in before they started this project. They were out on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and they threw a grass mat down or a straw mat, and none, nothing's been leveled off. It's, it's, if this even uh, would grow without any topsoil put down uh, uh, in place before they put the mat down, it's, it's just not, it's not going to even be manageable to run a lawnmower over it. And that's my complaint. If, if, the, if the utilities are going to come into our community and come into our front yards and the parkway and make improvements, um, that at a minimum that they restore that, that lawn to the condition that it was in before they started their project. And that's, that's my, my, my voice and that's my complaint. Yeah. That's all I ask for. It's, uh, it's, it's actually a little bit of an eyesore as well, to be honest with you, because they put a very large pedestal in um, after they ran their, their new conduit and wiring in. But it's off to the side, and it's, 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 yeah, one would have to judge for themselves if, they, if you think that that's something that's appropriate in the front of our homes in this community. But at a minimum, any of the, any of the utility companies, I think it, it should be noted that at least they show some respect for our community, and they put whatever they disrupt back the way it was before they started. That's it. Now, uh, just a minute. Uh, let Dan address the issue. I think uh, I, did, I think you said you had a conversation with Dan. Yes, Dan, several. So, Dan, do you want to address the issue for, yes, for the gentleman? Yes, and Mr. Bartell, with all due respect, well, we did. That was our city crews that had backfilled. 
Um, in respect to the backfill, we had given the contractor, which was AT&T, an opportunity to complete it by a certain date. He did not adhere to it, just kept on giving us additional dates, additional uh, pushing the schedule forward or backward, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, in respect to that, I told him our crews to go out there and backfill. I thought, I believe they had backfilled it with sand just due to the temperatures that were in place. Um, and I also told them, instructed our crews to put a fabric material over that because we weren't un unable to get sod, first of all. To put seed in there would not take. And we plan on coming back in there in spring, and we are going to be back charging AT&T uh, for all the work that was completed by our crews, including the time and the material. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know if that was your crew that came out to put the uh, straw mat down or not. I believe I saw the uh, Rivmar, the subcontractor, out, okay. as I said, on the day after Thanksgiving. Um, and at that point, it was uh, I, I, I didn't quite figure out what they were doing in the area there. We will make sure that the restoration will take. We do follow up on other utility companies' restoration, and AT&T really hasn't been in town uh, doing any type of massive work in the last couple of years. And <coughs> obviously the protocol that we set forth with them is addressed on our permits, and we do take action as necessary. Well, it's, uh, that's fine. That's good. All I'm asking for is that this be restored to what it was before they started this project. It and will be. What, what it looks like right now or what it will could possibly look like come springtime is not going to be acceptable. And uh, we, can, we can discuss it in the spring. I just wanted to come in here tonight to make sure it was something uh, that uh, you know, council uh, would, would understand that if they're doing this, at least the way I look at it is that it's, 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 it's respectful and it's, it's putting our property back the way it was. Correct. And you spoke about uh, uh, there's a pedestal that was in, in, uh, put in place yes, there? Yes, a rather large one, to be honest with you. What's about uh, five Dan, what's, what's with that? We with don't have being put in the, uh, the uh, pet uh, utility easement. companies, especially with the Federal Communications Act, um, the, these utilities, whether it's Comcast and or AT&T, they have the right to put these pedestals within right-of-ways slash utility easements um, at their discretion. As long as they're not a safety hazard for blocking site views, for example, they do have the right to put those in. Now, there was no pedestal there before? That's no. correct. No. Okay, that's why it's so ungainly for you because you didn't even have that before. Yeah, that, uh, I understand that, you know, and it was not something that I, you know, well, am happy about, but, you know, at the sa on the same token, it's just, uh, you know, it has to be what it has to be evidently for their upgrade. Um, but my main issue here is is that, that they had a timely manner of completing the project. It didn't appear that it was timely. That's why I was here in the last meeting. And now um, the fact that, you know, our you know, crew from the city had to come out and work. The, these folks showed up. I, I know they talked. Dan and I had spoke. They promised they were going to be out on the Friday before Thanksgiving. They never made it out. They made it out on Monday after, you know, our crew had already uh, cleaned up uh, the site and uh, did the sand fill. So the grass mat is over sand. It's not over topsoil. And as I said, I've been here for 23 years, and I've maintained it. I've, you know, that's... You know, it's, it's something that I've, you know, done, uh, you know, taken pride in and maintaining the front of the house. Um, and that's all I'm asking for. It's just that it's put back the way it was. So yeah. with, uh, you know, the initial, um, you know, my initial concern was is why it took so long for a small project to be completed in the first place. But, okay. you, know, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, it is what, what it, it was. So. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you. There's definite communication with that because they told you on the Friday, the 21st, that they're going to be out there by noon. Correct. And when I went out there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I fired up an email back to you saying, hey, this is, this is nuts. You're not even out here now. We already had that action plan in place if they weren't going to be cool, you know, basically out there by that time that we would backfill it for them. Okay. So that's on the uh, to-do list for the spring. Correct. Yeah. Is there anyone else in the audience that wanted to address the city council on any item? It doesn't have to be an item on that's, that's on the agenda this evening, but if you'd like to address the council, mm -hmm. please come forward. Good evening. Um, my name is Doug Hodak. I live at 7612 Wilton. That's in Darien, Illinois. 
and I say that because I didn't fly from out of town. I didn't drive from out of town or fly in here from out of state to attend the meeting. And when I leave here, I'll be going back to my house in Darien. I'm a resident. I've been here 25 years-ish. And uh, I really do love this town. And the Manning development that's being proposed tonight is, um, I know it's a very difficult process for everybody, including the residents, but it has to be, it has to be right for all of us, okay? <clears throat> Let me tell you a story. It's about four different meetings. I'll make my comments brief here. Uh, first meeting was back in March where the developer uh, invited some of the residents to uh, a meeting over across the driveway here in the police station and presented some of the, probably most of the same material that's here. And uh, um, talked about uh, cottage, cottages that were gonna, you know, cottage looking buildings, cottage motif, even a street that was called Cottage Lane going through the de development. We found out later that uh, uh, the developer actually was just that, a land developer who would sell to, uh, sell to builder or builders and um, asterisks. And uh, uh, the houses may or may not be cottage motif. They could be colonial, they could be English Tudor, they could be anything. So I felt that that was um, in part a deceitful tactic. And the meeting in general uh, was used to soften the inevitable resistance of the residents. Um, the second meeting was the zoning ordinance committee that was uh, in March, just right after that. And the developers uh, had another meeting, uh, as far as I could tell, identical to the first, and it was in the conference room right above us here, in which he addressed residents, and we all came down and had the uh, ordinance meeting, a zoning ordinance meeting. And in that, uh, the residents, I authored, I, I typed the letter, but uh, had the input of seven different households in particular the five that border the east, the southeast uh, part of the property, the Manning Woods property. We are the five houses that are most directly affected by this development. Um, instead of looking out onto the woods, we'll look onto not, uh, our house will look not only uh, onto one household but two because of the uh, hotly contested uh, uh, size of the lots. And that's, that's progress, I understand that. But um, going back to that meeting, there was, uh, if I'm sure most of you are familiar, that the uh, committee voted to deny. Uh, there was a recommendation to deny the proposal. And it was due in large part to the uh, litany of variances, and in particular the, uh, the density of the housing that was in that, in that proposal. The two-page letter that the uh, residents wrote um, that I typed out was echoed those same concerns. So the zoning committees, everything we heard up here at this, this table, this round table, uh, were the same things that we typed in that, in that document. So we felt like we we're congruent with um, the, city's, the city's view of things. Six months later, we had another uh, zoning ordinance meeting. And the, the uh, developer came back with an amended proposal, the proposal that actually you're gonna see tonight. There was 29 houses, went down to 26, and there's, you know, with that, a lot of dimensions changed as well. Uh, that admittedly was a great step in the right direction. We had a, uh, we felt as residents, and again, these are my words, but I'm representing the thoughts and uh, views of several residents, that was <coughs> a step in the right direction. Um, but it did not go far enough, and that is what the thesis of what I'm telling you right here, the, my soliloquy is, my thesis is the plan did not go far enough. And what the residents are asking for is to take it to a point where it's uh, more congruent, more in compliance, and doesn't have the litany of uh, variances that, um, that it currently does. And there's been back and forth who's going to live there and who wants to mow lawns and this and that. Um, you know, it's going to be young kids and old people that don't want to mow lawns. I can't tell you what the market's going to bear, but I can tell you what these it's going to look like. If you go over to the same kind of development over on Plainfield and Wolf Road, you'll see that it looks very nice from the road. You pull in there and it looks uh, terrible. Uh, it looks terrible. So anyway, the, um, the third meeting was, uh, well, the fourth meeting then would be the uh, Municipal Services meeting, uh, Service Committee meeting. I, I'm not sure what to say about that. Uh, it seemed well rehearsed. Um, I believe that the uh, developer and some of the people in that room um, 
it seemed very well rehearsed, and it became, uh, in my opinion, a blathering of accolades uh, upon the uh, proposal and uh, so the merits of the proposal. Um, I was not impressed. There were, there's, there's been a lot of <coughs> half truths and miscellaneous information that has really bothered me as a resident. Uh, during the course of these four meetings, we talk about uh, the trees. Look, I, I, uh, I live next to them. I know, you know, there's not a lot of trees worth saving in there. Is the, uh, is the assertion, and it's correct. There's buckthorn. There's Oriental bittersweet in there that's taken over most of the good trees, but there are. Uh, 80 to 100 year old Osage orange trees. I know because I look at them every day. And if a tornado came through this town, God forbid, like they did Plainfield back 25 years ago, there'd be two things standing, the water tower and those trees. They're like iron and there are valuable trees in there. And I, I hope those don't get damaged. There's uh, information given about wildlife that was in there. And I know you put houses, that wildlife's gonna find another place to live. I'm not trying to save Bambi tonight, but what I'm telling you is, that um, it was reported up here that the only wildlife found was a, uh, a blue or gray herring that quote unquote must have flown away. Now that's not true, uh, it's verifiable. Uh, my neighbor has pictures, there are deer, there are coyotes, there was a new litter, I think there was four, uh, two years ago there was a litter of four, I think three of them survived the winter. Um, I just don't like the fact that all of the uh, facts aren't being presented um, um, truthfully or completely or whatever. Um, there was also some, uh, what I would call fodder offered up at the last meeting, which uh, didn't seem to be uh, in tune with anything. There was talk about a, a day one shading or a day one uh, blind between the houses and the um, th new development. <coughs> and I appreciated that. Uh, but the fact is that these Osage oranges have such a large canopy that you would have to find trees that could grow in the dark underneath them. Um, it's just not <coughs> going to be possible. And um, the only, I'm, I'm wondering how I'm not going to see into two different uh, neighbor's yards. That's more my problem than anyone here, but again, it's um, it, it the peculiar developments of that meeting. In any case, uh, this is the meeting that really matters, right? This is where the rubber meets the road. And um, I wish Mr. Gardner well in selling or uh, developing this property. He's been a very good neighbor to us. I hope it ends up in good hands and uh, the right kind of property is developed here. Um, but I also get the feeling that uh, the residents' concerns may not be taken um, seriously or may not be taken uh, in their full effect. Um, I sat in meetings where the previous meeting was a rebuttal of all the, the residents' uh, issues from the previous meeting, uh, a rebuttal. So welcome, we're here to develop a uh, review of proposal. This is why the residents were wrong last time we sat down. Um, I really believe that there's a cooperative already formed between the developer and the city. And um, I hope that's not true. I hope that the uh, council, um, I hope that they deny the proposal as, as, as submitted tonight. Um, that's, that's the intention, or that's the uh, will of the people here as far as the households I represent. So again, my, uh, my name is Doug Hodak and I live in Darien, Illinois. I hope you remember my name because mm. I and the residents will remember yours at election day. Thank uh, you. Dave, Dave, uh, this is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Doug, yes. I apologize. That's right. Uh, did you try to reach me on the, uh, by phone today? I did not. Oh, okay, I thought I saw a uh, Hodak name come up on my, cell, my phone at home. Uh, but uh, no message was left. But at any rate, this is a preliminary approval. So whatever the council decides on this, this development still has to go through new, uh, some other st other steps and other presentations Understood. before the public. Understood. Okay. Thank, thank I, you for I the didn't know if you but were it aware. Was, it's, yeah. the, uh, it's the concept that bothers, bothers us, the density. Okay. Again, the density, the density of housing, the proportion of houses to the lot size is what we're, we're opposing. And uh, it is, it's assumed that through uh, granting of that concept, the, uh, the foundation per se is in place. Thank you for your comments. Did anyone else in the audience want to adjust the, uh, address the council? Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Bartell. And I've lived in Darien since 85, 86. 
<coughs> I do have a problem with this development. Not that I'm against development, but like the when we were here for the Walmart Mall, we had to see that things were done the right way. And that's why I'm here, because I don't believe they are being done the right way. I have a problem with this development in many aspects, which I presented at the last two meetings, and I'm here to say it again because I really don't think people are listening. Um, <coughs> we would like to see... Yep, it's make sure you get the microphone close okay. to you when you're... S yes. We would like to see in this community... We don't, we're not against this development, but like I said, we would like to see it done the right way. These people here, they're complaining about seeing two homes. If, if this development was cut back to the 20 homes like was suggested, all of these lots would fit the Darien ordinance specifications, okay? And we wouldn't be granting nine waivers of variance, nine. Some people can't get one to put a sidewalk in but we're giving this gentleman nine waivers. I can test a lot of things in here, but if we could get it down to 20, and let's face it, it is about money. That's what this is about. It's, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's about seniors. It's about this. It's about that. No senior goes and moves down to a 4,000 square foot home. Okay, if they're going to do that, they go to Carolina. They go to a retirement community. Okay, and the whole thing with the young people, that's all smoke and mirrors. This is simply to maximize profit. Okay? You put the 20 lots in here, you don't need to give any variances. The streets work. Curbs work. Everybody gets sidewalks. You get parking on two sides of the street. Your fire engines have plenty of room to get down the street, which I would severely question these corners if that hook and ladder truck has to get through there <coughs> and there are vehicles parked in there and heaven forbid if someone parks on the other side of the road. Okay, there's no sidewalks on the opposite side, which means that if kids want to go anywhere, they either walk in the street or have to cross a, a skinnier street, which they tell me is safer, but if your ball bounces in the street, I'll take the extra three feet, thank you. Okay. <coughs> so, by doing that also, you could improve your retention areas by getting rid of this lot and having a little more retention. Also, the development does not address putting in any sidewalk along Manning Road. There will be kids that may have to get to school and will need a sidewalk. I don't think there is room in this drawing to put sidewalk along Manning Road. Okay, <coughs> the whole reason that we have ordinances, okay, not counting where you live, which was built, I think, in the 50s or late 40s, which was probably was still lace. It wasn't even daring, I don't think, then. Okay, so the older communities learned, and like you said, they were here asking for sidewalks and curbs and proper drainage. I remember that. I was at that meeting. Okay, that's why we require builders to put these things in now so they're built the right way. Um, again, we have concerns about the parking on one side of the street, um, about the uh, lack of sidewalks, about the fire trucks and ambulances having proper access. Okay, as far as the 27 foot, if I'm a plow driver, I like to see all my streets the same size. That way I don't rack the plow up on one of the curbs because I assume it's 30 feet, but it's only 27, okay? Um, give me one second, please. So we would like to see, uh, again, this scaled back to like 20 homes. Then all the lots work, the sidewalks work, everything works. So if if the cost, like usual, would be sent on to you or me as the buyer, this development would still be totally possible. Because if I'm interested in buying it, I'm going to pay for those extra improvements. So it is still feasible, even though they're going to tell you it is not because of the topography or whatever. Okay? You saw what happened at the Eyed Tree Farm. Okay? If, if you haven't been there, everything was bulldozed. That's what's going to happen here. I don't care what he tells you. It's going to get bulldozed and they're going to start over. 
okay, because 65-foot elm trees are part of those trees that are really just garbage. Um, <coughs> so I would like to see the city council tonight work with us as the residents that live in the area with the developer and see if we can't fix this a little bit to make it a little bit more pleasing to the people that live here in Darien and the people that come here to live in Darien and don't settle for, oh, it's for the elderly. Oh, it's for the young. Oh, wait a minute, it's for the guy from, uh, yeah, oh, the, the one that lives over by you that doesn't have sidewalks. He can come over here and not have sidewalks, okay? That's not what Darien is. Darien is a nice place to live right on your sign. So I hope you will not approve this tonight and you will ask for further clarification and work with us as the residents, with the owner and with the developer and maybe make just a few changes where everybody can be happy and still have a good development. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that wanted to address the council? It doesn't have to be on this particular item uh, that the two past <coughs> speakers have, uh, have addressed. Uh, it could be any question you have for the city. Okay, let's move on then to um, the approval of the minutes of November 17th. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Belke, seconded by Alderman Shower. Any additions or deletions for the clerk? Roll, please. Belke? Aye. Shower? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Belzac? Aye. McIver? Aye. Seven <coughs> ayes. The minutes have been approved. The next item is receiving of communications. Do any of the aldermen have communications to share? Alderman Seifert? Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a take of what you mentioned earlier about the private streets. Um, Chief, I received another uh, communication from a resident who backs up to Anderman Lane. I know it's a private drive in Farmingdale Apartments. Uh, we have Somerset, which the house is on Somerset back up. Their backyards are in Anderman Lane. Uh, for probably the last six months, Anderman Lane has been used as a parking for the residents and the apartments on both sides of the street, 24 hours a day, uh, coming and going all nights and all days. And the chief was was he contacted the management company, but I believe that was a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I'm uh, just checking to see if there's an update because I did get another complaint this week. There, <coughs> excuse me, there is no update. I spoke with Mr. Barron's, was the uh, one of the new property managers over there. What they're saying is that uh, they've been restriping and doing some resurfacing in their parking lot. Not sure if that's finished yet. Uh, he been said he finished for a while. Actually, he said he would consider uh, or take to his board the possibility of limiting the the parking there, but uh, okay, I don't have an update. Yeah, right. so that was a couple about two weeks ago. So we haven't heard anything since. No, sir. Okay, and uh, I've been driving by there pretty much on a daily basis now, and and it's cars really. There's six to ten cars parked both sides of the streets, twenty four seven. Hmm. You'll you'll uh, call that property manager again. Keep in mind, we, because it is a private street, right. if, if they choose Don't not cooperate. to, if they choose not to cooperate, then it, there's not not much we, we I mean, there's no enforcement status that we can take. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I'm personally hoping that the winter months and their plows are going to sort of dictate that people can no, will no longer park there. But yeah, the bane of private streets. How many times have we had to deal with them and taking them over and trying to get them uh, up to code? Okay, uh, any other communications to share? Alderman McIver. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I received multiple communications about this development, so some were, you know, didn't really want to bring them out in the open, so um, I'll just talk about it when, it when this comes up. Yeah, they probably reiterated what we've heard this evening already. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the s same concerns. Okay, so. uh, just a few items that I've received. I, I received a personal note from Dor Dolores Keith uh, who reached out to us regarding uh, uh, raking of leaves in a, up at her home, and uh, we were able to get, I think it's the Eisenhower Junior High uh, kids uh, help out, Darien Help and Darien, uh, once every spring and fall, and she sent a thank you note for, uh, for, that, for that job well done. <coughs> uh, Chief Brown received a, a very nice <coughs> email and passed it on to me this, e this evening from the Fla Flavin family. Uh, they attended the town hall meeting that we held at Carriage Greens last week. Uh, very, uh, uh, very glowing thank you to our 
uh, chief and police department for all of the efforts they're making in being proactive to um, help us solve the burglaries that have been occurring in the city. Uh, and she, she lives in Carriage Hill, so she was very grateful for the, uh, the uh, extra uh, police cars on the street. Uh, another note from, uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Jerome Koyak, uh, Ward 6, who just absolutely loves Alderman MacGyver, and, uh, but also wanted to pass on a note to me to say thank you uh, that Paul, uh, regarding Paul Nozak and his responses his prompt responses to his questions regarding NIGAS. So I'd like to present those for the record. If there's no other communications, let's move on to the mayor's report. And under the mayor's report, I have the uh, a proclama a, um, a proclamation this evening. Let me get to that. The mayoral proclamation reads as follows, whereas motor vehicles crash, motor, motor vehicle crashes killed 991 people in Illinois during 2014 to 13, and whereas hundreds of those deaths involved a driver impaired by alcohol and or drugs, and whereas the December holiday season is traditionally one of the most deadly times of the year for impaired driving, and whereas for thousands of families across the state and the nation, holidays are a time to remember loved ones lost, and whereas organizations across the state and the nation are joined with the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over and other campaigns that foster public awareness of the dangers of impaired driving and anti-impaired driving law enforcement efforts, and whereas the community of Darien is proud to partner with the Illinois Department of Transportation uh, Division of Traffic Safety and other tra traffic safety groups in that effort to make our roads and streets safer. Now therefore I, Kathleen Weaver, Mayor of the City of Darien, do hereby proclaim the month of December 2014 as Drug, Drunk and Drive, Drug Driving 3D Prevention Month in the City of Darien and do hereby call upon all citizens, government agencies, business leaders, hospitals and healthcare providers, schools, public and private institutions to promote awareness of the impaired driving problem, to support programs and policies to reduce the incidence of impaired driving, and to promote safer and healthier behaviors regarding the use of alcohol and other drugs this December holiday season and throughout the year. Uh, do we have anyone in the audience to accept this proclamation? Okay, we'll get it to the parties that uh, requested it. Okay, let's move on to the city clerk's report. I have two items, Madam Mayor. Meet and greet with the mayor will take place on Monday, December the 15th at 6 p.m. in the city hall upstairs conference room. And also, um, acceptance of candidate petitions or certificates of nomination for the consolidated election, which will be held on April the 7th of 2015 for the office of mayor, clerk, treasurer, Alderman Ward 2, Alderman Ward 4, and Alderman Ward 6 will be accepted beginning on Monday, December the 15th at 8.30 a.m. here at City Hall. Uh, the last date to file your papers will take place on December the 22nd at 5 p.m. Thank you. Okay. And since there is no, uh, the city administrator is not here, he's under the weather, has the flu. Paul, did you have a report for us? No, no report. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the treasurer's report. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped right over. Department heads, do we have any department head reports? No report, Madam Mayor, just a short announcement. The police department will be posting a $5,000 reward uh, for the uh, arrest and prosecution of uh, information for the arrest and prosecution on the uh, burglary pattern that we've been working on. Alderman uh, Kenny had come and asked if that was a possibility. I got confirmation on today that we're able to use uh, federal seized money to post that reward. Very good. Any report, Dan? Yes, just uh, briefly, Madam Mayor, 75th Street updates. Uh, paving is scheduled, uh, tentatively scheduled to be complete on Wednesday. Again, with the weather, it's the temperatures, and again, uh, rain or snow. Also, uh, if that works out Thursday, they'll be uh, start from the stripe, followed up by the traffic signal and foundations. The traffic signal and foundations, most of the foundations are mostly in. Uh, they're waiting for the signals themselves, uh, the signals themselves, are two to three weeks out yet, so we'll start seeing, hopefully this year yet, 
uh, some signals, permanent signals going up. And the sidewalks, again, will start up if the ground uh, thaws out. I thought there was a temperature issue as far as uh, putting asphalt down. There is, and, and what they've done is uh, with this mix design, there's an accelerant uh, or an additive that could be added to the mix to let it perform at uh, lower temperatures. Yeah, because it's going to be a nightmare if we don't get all those cones gone and that pavement done. I, can, I can't even think of what the snow plows are going to do. Correct, and that's what they're concerned about, too. I, I know they've worked the last two days, and um, they've put down quite a bit of asphalt over the last two days, Saturday and Sunday. Dan, can you talk about the oh, – I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh. Can you talk about the, the email that Brian sent to you from Mr. Finnegan regarding 75th <laughs> Street? Um, there's several different issues, and those are being addressed by the county. Some of them are uh, uh, restoration issues. One of the restoration issues, that that's the most recent one in respect to uh, um, adjacent to his property, there was some um, damage due to trucks. Uh, that supposedly was fixed today by natural, uh, by the landscape contractor, 475th Street. Um, there's some other outstanding issues that the county is addressing uh, from a telephone poll. Uh, to the uh, radius of the existing intersection. Uh, that's the only information that I have at this point. Where's, where's that pro Mr. Finnegan's property? Well, he's, I don't think he lives, lives there. He was just addressing the, the, the proximity of the sidewalk now on 70, 75th Street going t from Williams towards KS Avenue, and he thought there was, wasn't enough um, space between 75th Street and the, 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 the sidewalk. And that was the additional issue. The additional issue that Mr. Kenny has uh, referred to is the sidewalk on the uh, nor uh, south side of 75th Street was basically butted to the property lines uh, on 75th Street in the southern right-of-way. The county has now moved over, moved that sidewalk over, and it's approximately anywhere from three to five feet away from the existing curb line. The county is responding to that. Uh, from what I recall, the sidewalk was moved due to the city of Darien's request because of all the uh, screening that was in place and the constant issues that staff has with the mature trees and all the, you know, whether the county or the residents have to keep on cutting them back, it really gets to be a mess out there. So they did move it over, but by moving it over, there originally our thought process was that they would move it over several feet, but there were some stormwater issues, and again, we're waiting for the county to respond to that. Uh, for a correct, appropriate answer. Thank you. Alderman Seifert. Uh, thank you. Uh, two things for Dan. One, regarding 75th Street, and I'm, I didn't notice it until recently, but it appears there's no longer that half-circle turn from 75th onto Plainfield when you're going east on correct. 75th Street. So it would be a sharp right turn at the light as opposed to the way it used to be with the nice little curve turn. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and this is something that uh, the county has informed us of that when it was uh, pl during the planning stages that they would not be cutting it back. Um, at the same time, I did send off in a recent email requesting them, is this a, will a right hand turn be allowed? And I've told them some of the concerns that we've had from residents in making that turn, uh, that it is a very sharp turn. So I'm waiting for a response back mm -hmm. from uh, the county engineer on that one. What was their logic in taking it out? Part of it was is unwarranted. Um, oh, too close to the light, all that jazz. It's a combination of several different items from a traffic engineering standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mr. Finnegan. And the second item I have is something that uh, came up in a monthly report uh, regarding the fire hydrant painting. I, kn I know we had some issues with the contractor last year, and we're just wondering how it's going this year with the new contractor. Oh, it's, it's no. The, issue. It, it, the contractor is this year's contractor. Right. It was this year's contractor. Yeah. This year's contractor right. is, we're not a renewing new, it. is a new vendor. That new vendor was recently terminated uh, due to lack of performance. At the same time, we're negotiating with the vendor that completed the hydrant painting last year. Um, we're trying to negotiate with him for finishing of these fire hydrants at the proposed unit prices that were offered in conjunction with that offering him the contract for next year which is part of a three-year contract or phase three at the same unit prices as the recent uh, vendor that has been terminated. Is that why the expenditure this month is for primer only? Didn't uh, there was a couple of them that were for we did a physical count of the inventory of the hydrants that were completed some of them were not completed so there is a primer on them only. Uh, there's only a couple of them. 
uh, that have a primer coat only. So there was some uh, primer only um, units cost in the con in the final invoice. Thank you. I, I believe the number was dramatically reduced from what we originally planned on completing. Also, wasn't it, Dan? Correct. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah we're about one third of uh, our units completed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll be under budget on that one. For now. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> Okay, if there's no other uh, questions for the department heads, let's move on to the Treasury's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this evening I'm requesting a Council's approval of warrant number 141514 in the amount of $236,663.05 from the listed funds, payroll for the period ended November 27th in the amount of $289,307.04 for a total to be approved of $525,970.09. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Seifert, seconded by Alderman Scheller. I have a question on page five. Uh, the dehumidifier for a police evidence room, why is it under the Public <coughs> Works Department budget? For the building, for the building maintenance, we have uh, the building maintenance item is encompasses both the city hall and the police department. Okay. Is that's, that is that's part of the build-out for the evidence room. Yeah, I, I understand that, but I couldn't figure out. I mean, is, is Public Works going to have to maintain it too? Is that the is that the, no. the idea here? And uh, any type of maintenance that's required, whether it's a furnace, a humidifier, it will fall under our department, and we'll take the appropriate action to either have a vendor service it or replace it if the staff has the opportunity okay. and capability. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for the treasurer? In the roll, please. Seifert? Aye. Schauer? Aye. McIver? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Belke? Aye. Seven ayes. The warrant has been approved. Do you want to go over the monthly report? Okay. Uh, the monthly report uh, for the period ended October 31st, which represents halfway through our fiscal year, to uh, give you some uh, perspective. Collect the general fund year to date revenue of $7,926,522, expenditures of $6,200,469, for a current fund balance of $2,630,807, water fund year to date revenue $2,245,859, expenditures $2,919,906. For a current balance of $345,285, motor fuel tax fund year to date revenue of $472,776, expenditures of $192,880, for a current balance of $432,351, water depreciation fund year to date revenue of $1,588, expenditures of $30,391, current balance of $277,631. Capital Improvement Fund year to date revenue of $4,460,793, expenditures of $3,120,781 for a current balance of $6,759,609, and the Capital Projects Debt Service Fund year to date revenue of $489,743, expenditures of $36,750 for a current balance of $466,405. Uh, do we have any questions for the Treasurer on this report? Uh, and Mike, I think you wanted to go over the um, police pension. I just pension. wanted to update the council. We did have our quarterly meeting uh, reviewing the third quarter report for the police pension fund performance for the quarter. Uh, the period ended for September 30th, and I don't know if you may recall, September was a, was a rather bad month in terms of uh, performance in the stock market. Uh, so for the quarter, between our two fund managers, one had a negative, a uh, little less than a half of a uh, percentage point uh, decrease in their uh, performance and the other about three quarters of a percent percentage decrease. But fiscal year to date, uh, one were up 4.27 percent and the other three and a quarter uh, percent. So we're still doing reasonably well. Uh, the one manager gave us the updated report as of October 31st and that October was a better month. I said that he'd give us that if it was a, a worse month. So. Uh, I think we recouped quite a bit of it in October, and I'd be surprised if it hasn't improved even more in November. So I, I think we're on track to, as of right now, to have a pretty good good year. Yeah. You think we'll hit seven? Hopefully. I mean, our bogey is seven, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to hit seven. We're at about, we're at four, a little over four on one and three and a quarter on the other. 
Uh, so on average, they both have about 50% of the account. So we're on average to hit it, assuming everything else holds yeah. up. <coughs> one, yeah, why don't you mention the names of the two uh, portfolio, portfolio managers okay, yeah, we have? They're, they're each managing about $11 million. We have a total of about $23 million in the fund, and one's managing about 11 The other $12 million, MB Financial uh, manages uh, part of it, and the other is Sawyer Fuldudo. Sawyer Fuldudo used to be part of Oakbrook Bank when Oakbrook Bank was real big in the pension funding. And uh, they replaced UBS a few years ago because UBS could not act as a fiduciary uh, for our account, uh, whereas uh, Sawyer Fuldudo can. Uh, so they, we, we monitor them both. It's good having them both because they both <coughs> have a little different perspective, and it's interesting to see uh, one quarter one will outperform the other. So I think it's good having uh, a little bit of competition there between the two of them. Is there any report update report on IMET? What's what's the status on that? No. Uh, I think there was another article. I don't know if anyone saw it in the business section of Sunday's Tribune, but just uh, pretty much reiterating what we already know about it. Uh, apparently, the uh, person involved uh, is cooperating, and uh, he does have some assets. So, I mean, a large part of it will be recouped. But, uh, again, I uh, would anticipate that 100 percent will not be recouped. So, again, uh, I think our, our risk was just over $1,000 uh, based on the last report, and I would assume that uh, uh, we would recoup probably the majority of that. Um, unfortunately, a few municipalities aren't as lucky as we are. Uh, they had a great deal of money in the IMET funds and may not uh, see that back. Yeah, down in Shoals particularly, over $500,000. And yeah. I'd, I'd like to claim credit for it, but it is just dumb luck that we were getting a better return someplace else, so we didn't have the money in there. Yeah. Well, I, I, think you <laughs> I think you both sent something, and that's why you, you told them to mo pull the money. Well, well, we, we I'll give you that credit. <laughs> well, we, we had never really kept that much money in because the return on it was far inferior to what we've been getting on our money. Uh, if, if they had offered a better rate, uh, we probably would have had more money in there. Okay, thank you. Uh, standing committee reports. Alderman Marquez. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Municipal Services Committee at its last meeting uh, approved and submitted the minutes of the October 27, 2014 meeting to the clerk's office. And our next meeting is December 22nd at 6.30 here in the Council Chambers. Alderman McIver. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The next police committee meeting will not be on our regular day at a regular time. Um, it will be on Tuesday the 16th, I believe, at 6.30 p.m. at in the uh, police uh, train. Uh, it hopefully it's available in the training room. So it's one day later and a half hour later. Okay, thank you. Alderman Schauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Tonight's December 1st admin finance meeting was canceled due to lack of agenda items, and our next admin finance meeting will be held on Monday, January 5th, 2015 at 6 p.m. in our upstairs meeting room. Wasn't it just 2000? And now we're talking 2015. Yeah, Holy it's crazy. Time. I know. Okay, let's move on to uh, questions and comments, agenda-related. Uh, I. I have a feeling most questions or uh, comments were already made in the previous uh, time to speak, but is there anyone in the audience that wanted to address the council on any of the items on the agenda this evening? Uh, is, do any of the aldermen have uh, questions or comments? Well, I guess um, before we um, go to the new business <coughs> item of the, oops, sorry, here, there we go. Um, of the uh, ordinance rezoning property uh, from R1 to R2, approving preliminary plat of subdivision preliminary engineering, uh, basically the, the Manning property. Um, I do want to make some comments on that. Um, first of all, I want to, uh, Philip Gardner is a resident in Ward 6 as well. And um, he's, uh, you know, I think been doing a really, at least in uh, almost 10 years that I've been here, um, he's been doing uh, a really great job of trying to find um, a good use for that property um, and has had some really great ideas from very green um, um, uh, developments that you know are kind of almost self-sustaining homes, which I personally appreciated, um, to obviously the one that we're going to be talking about this e or voting on this evening, at least um, for the preliminary or the ordinance to rezone and then the nine uh, variances. So uh, I do want to note that he's been a really great resident has, and who's been trying to really work with his neighbors to do, you know, to find um, the right subdivision or the right fit for that development. That being said, um, I have um, received many uh, 
request to vote, you know, not in favor of this, this particular uh, development as far as the number of homes, um, the fact that it's a rezoning, the fact that there's these nine uh, variances. And speaking from as someone who has personally gone through this as a resident to properties that have gone through re rezoning, um, we've, you know, as a resident who fought hard, unfortunately, against a city, another city, um, and just, you know, was railroaded and didn't really have a say. I'm kind of surprised that given the fact that our um, commission voted against this, um, that we're not considering the voice of the commission and the residents with respect to this particular um, development. Um, I'm not, I'm, as, a, as a voting member of the council, I'm not comfortable with these particular plans as they're presented. They're not really plans, they're ideas, and they're, you know, they're what the, the 26 homes, the size of the lots, the setbacks, that's laying the foundation for what I think is going to be a not, not a good development. It's not like Darien has so many developments going on at this, you know, at basically we don't have that much land to develop and, and it feels like we're pushing something through just to do something there. And at the expense of the residents who, you know, bought homes in good faith that would um, abut a property that zoned R1, you know, our own master plan. And, um, you know, why? I mean, these, these drawings, you know, they're cute, but they're not even really, um, s they're, they're not, you know, designed for this lot. They're pulled out of um, catalogs. And they're, you know, I think used to show oh, a cute cottage style, but everything about it says, you know, narrow lot properties, petite, you know, you know, specifically designed to, s you know, squeeze in. I mean, why are we doing that? Wh why is Darian suddenly kind of turning a blind eye and ear to the residents who are will be impacted by this development? So I just wanted to go on record that, um, you know, I, I have to voice um, the opposition of the majority of people who have contacted me um, to express concerns. And they're the, they're the neighbors that are going to have to live with this in their backyard, so. Mr. Yeah, I'm, you know, to not, since I'm going to roll back with um, Alderman MacGyver, some of the comments I made during um, work session, I don't believe uh, Mr. Hodick um, or Mr. Bartell were here for the work session. Mr. Bartell might have been there. And I echo the same sentiments that Alderman MacGyver has. Um, I believe, um, and I, I know th what was discussed at, during workshop, but I still have a hard time with, you know, nine variances, you know, to make something work. Um, I believe Mr. Bertel has got a great point when he says, um, you know, it's all about money. Why can't you make money off of 20 homes as opposed to the 20, the 26? You were, at, you were at 29, you figured out how to make it 26. You know, why can't you make it fit at 20? If that, lot, if that lot was only big enough to make, if that lot was smaller than what it is now and you're only able to make 20 homes in there, would you not sell it? I, I, believe, I believe you would sell it for the, for the 20 homes. Um, I, still have a, I still have a concern. Um, I know this is preliminary, but I, um, unless I know how kids are getting out of that subdivision, going down the street down to Elizabeth Ide um, or across the street of, of Manning, um, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, happy with, with the plan. Um, and I just think it's a, it's a, it's a tricky time in, in real estate markets for values because we're, we're, we're improving. I've seen a, a home in Downers Grove where it w went up. It was framed. The home sat there for, you know, a couple of years um, to the point where the village of Downers Grove had to condemn it and tear it down at the cost of the taxpayers. I'm also looking at the tax, uh, taxpayer dollars for something like that that we doesn't have to happen in the future. So those are those are my thoughts. Okay, Alderman Belke. I guess part of part of the concern I'm hearing would happen regardless if there's 20 homes or if there's 28 homes, 26 lots, because your you know your concern with the trees being gone, well that would happen in any event. Um, just some of these other things would happen in any event. I mean, this property is going to get develop developed sooner or later, um, so it's a matter of the variances, which I understand. Um, but again, I think this is, uh, yes, it's something Darian hasn't done before, but that's the point. It's trying to open up to um, people that have a, a different desire to not live on the large lots. 
and to be in a smaller little subdivision. And some of these houses may be ranches, so they're, they're one levels, and that, m that could meet a particular demand. The other thing is, um, as far as looks go, if you look at Darien Ridge subdivision, that ratio between the number of lots they have per acre is the same as this development. And if anybody's been there, it's on 67th Street, a little east of Clear, um, Cass, Cass Avenue. 67th and Ridge. Right, in this teen circle. It's a beautiful subdivision. Um, and somebody mentioned something about a house being for sale and not, not being sold. But there could be other circumstances of why that house wasn't sold. I don't, I don't I'm not privy to that. So as far as looks go, aesthetics go, I think it still fits. I think there's a need, and I think the timing is good for development like that. It's being developed where it's the infrastructure is coming first. So in the event that it doesn't go as planned and everything gets built, I mean, there's other options down the road, I think, that can, that can help that, that property. I would like to ask Dan if he has any comments on um, busing on Manning Road or if there was any room for a, a sidewalk or, or something like that. Again, on, on Manning Road, depending on what's, uh, how far this moves, the developer would be required to put a sidewalk at a minimal fronting his subdivision on Manning Road. Now we could also provide a, an additional uh, condition that additional sidewalk must be connected up to um, further that further to the I guess be the west or the north of Manning Road there at uh, Fairview um, so we could make that a condition as well now the problem there is that past the developers property limits those residents may be opposed to removing the screening that's currently in place, whether it's scrub, whether it's a value, it's screening nonetheless. Um, so again, those residents may be opposed to a sidewalk. If that is the case, we would then have to look at opportunities for, again, the subdivision that's proposed, having sidewalk and being able to put kids or pedestrians in general across the street, whether that's through crosswalks, whether that's through additional signage, as far as busing, and school children, um, I think that all the all the community or all the schools within the area will pick up the children at a designated corner, and they will not make them cross a roadway such as Manning Road. Um, and I believe, and I am not familiar with all the schools' policies, but it's my understanding that schools have to offer uh, busing for their children within a certain if, if they can't walk. They don't pick up people like across Dan, the Dan, they have to be outside of a mile and yeah. a half. Yeah, okay, I thought 66 picks up all children. Um, that, was, that was my understanding right. in our previous discussion. 61 doesn't, but 66 um, does. I don't remember, you know, because I, I don't know if they have bus stops right there on uh, Manning. Well, they <coughs> wouldn't necessarily, yeah, that's, that's true. They wouldn't necessarily have to have a bus stop. They could, because it is a circular street, they could drive through and pick up kids. But I... I yeah. thought that was the, my yeah. understanding was that they, p they bust mine, everybody. Mine too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, we got bust, but I think they did say something about that. Yeah. But I, thought I thought 61 bust 61 does do year. all. No. Either this year they bust everybody yeah. this year. Right, right. Yeah. Now, Mayor, you're familiar with the Deering Ridge subdivision because I think that one, when you, for the um, area that's facing 67th Street, I don't think there's sidewalks there either. Uh, I'm trying I'm to think. I, I think going south there are sidewalks. I'm not. I can't remember but going I mean north. Going east west. Right. Yeah, it's on the east side of the street. Yes, but going south, I think there's sidewalks going to 67th Street from that subdivision. But going north, it, you know, you're traveling right into Westmont at one point. So I'm not right. sure if there's sidewalks there. I can't recall what side the sidewalks were on. Uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, I didn't think there was. I think it's the south side. I think yeah. this. Yeah. Well, there is there isn't a south side. There's an east and a west side to the. Oh, you're talking about inside the subdivision. Right. Oh, okay. And I'm I talking outside. I, I was I was talking about about Ridge. Yeah. Right. Street. I don't think there's a sidewalk on the north side at all. On the, on the north side of of Sixty Seventh Street. No, there's no sidewalk. So I don't know how they get anywhere. 
the kids stand at the corner. Uh, the, there's a bus stop at yeah, the and corner. Yeah, that was an issue also with some residents from years ago on 67th Street that some of them wanted curb and gutter, some didn't want curb and gutter. Again, same thing with the sidewalk issue, and um, we see both sides of it, the rural effect, the non-rural effect. I should say the city effect and rural effect. So, Dan, back to the sidewalks on Manning and, and the the um, discussion we just had, is that something that is going to, would come out later in the plans, or is that something that would affect this decision tonight? Again, we can make that as an additional part of the condition, and we can forward that, so, uh, you know, as, far as part of the pro, uh, final. If the developer decides to proceed with that, that's one that's an additional condition. If he doesn't accept that condition, then we'll have to, uh, you know, address that at a final uh, um, meeting. Dan, I have a question. What what what's the approximate square footage on the homes? I don't remember. I'd have to defer proposed. that over to Mr. Swanson. Okay, so you know, Alderman Belke is saying that there's a demand. Well, guess what? Woodridge is putting in how many homes at Timber's Edge? That's the size of their homes there. Those are. I'm looking. I, I guess his name is a hundred. 160, 100, 160, yeah, it's no, like 100, 148. That's on, the, that's on the Eid Farm? Yes. Eid farm. Yeah, so, oh my you know, there's 148 of these homes being dumped into the area right now. Um, yeah. um, dumped is a good word, yes. <laughs> so, so, again, uh, you know, I, I think that it seems like, I, I just don't, I guess, understand why we're, you know, in this hurry to really develop some, or to approve something that, in my opinion, seems kind of half-baked. You know, um, it's all, this is an idea. You know, these are the kind of residents that would live there. Well, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, how could you predict who's going to be interested in buying homes in that area? You know, so, you know, speculation is, you know, it's great, but these are the facts. And the facts here are, are you know, these are just copies of proposed drawings you can buy by calling 1-800-DREAMHOUSE or, um, order blueprints seven days a week, you know, so that isn't to me a, a fully developed development plan. Okay, let's let's move on to uh, uh, old business and there being no old biz business, let's move to the consent agenda. There are two items on the consent agenda. Let me read both of those items. Uh, the first is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an engineering agreement with Christopher Burke Engineering for pavement corings for our, our proposed 2015 street maintenance program in an amount not to exceed $12,000. Item B is a motion to approve a resolution to enter into an engineering agreement with Christopher Burke Engineering for the 2015 street maintenance program in an amount not to exceed $30,194. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Seifert, seconded by Alderman Belzec. Discussion, or the roll, please. Seifert? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Belke? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Marquez? Aye. McIver? Aye. Shower? Aye. Seven ayes. The two items have been approved. Uh, let's move to new business. Item A is a motion to approve an ordinance levying taxes for the general and special corporate purposes for the fiscal year commencing on the first day of May. 2014 and ending on the 30th day of April 2015 for the city of Darien. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Kenny, seconded by Alderman Seifert. This is uh, the, the tax levy that we have to do well in advance of our budget process, but that's the law that we have to provide uh, a number to the, uh, the clerk uh, for the, the, t the taxes, the, the money that we want to receive for next, ye for next year. Um, that's an explanation if you have, if you want to get more information. Actually, I could probably tell you what that uh, number is. The, uh, the general corporate purpose fund and the special corporate levy uh, is, is an amount of $1,645,817. Uh, the general fund would be requesting $445,812, and our police pension fund would be uh, requesting $1,200,005. And that's what makes up our uh, the corporate uh, levy that we are requesting. 
Yes. Uh, I think the important thing to point out here is the amount that we're requesting in the levy is the same dollar amount as we've requested in the prior year. So a resident would experience, theoretically, should experience no increase in their share of the dairy and real estate taxes. Uh, they could only go down pending our budget meetings uh, in the in the winter, February and March. Uh, but uh, the mo this is the highest amount that we could know. We could ask for more, but we're only asking for the same amount as last as year. As last dollar year's, wise, so yes. I think that's the important thing for the residents that are watching this on TV. We're not asking for anything additional from the city standpoint. And frankly, the, uh, the police pension uh, 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 levy is high, goes up higher every year, right, and our general system. purpose goes down to keep it to keep the tax the the amount we ask for level with the previous year. Uh, the the police pension unfortunately never goes down; it always goes up. The portion of this year is only four thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, with that said, uh, do. Uh, the roll, please. Kenny. Aye. Seifert. Aye. Shower. Aye. McIver. Aye. Belke. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Marquez. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Seven ayes. Excuse me. Uh, the motion has been approved. Item B under new business is a motion to approve an ordinance for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning the first day of May 2014 and ending on the 30th day of, of April 2015 for the Darien Special Service Area Number 1, known as Terra Hill. Uh, this amount is $5,000 that's levied uh, uh, against the homeowners in Terra Hill. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Belzac. Discussion? The roll, please. Schauer? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Belke? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Seifert? Aye. McIver? Aye. Seven ayes. Well, the motion has been approved. Item C is a motion to approve an ordinance rezoning property from R1 to R2, approving a preliminary plat of subdivision, preliminary engineering, variations from the zoning ordinance and subdivision regulations for a development called Manning Woods Subdivision 2100 Manning Road. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Marquez. And I want to make note of the fact that this will require five affirmative votes for it to be passed since it was denied by the, uh, by the pl plan commission. Yes. Uh, a lot's been said by both residents and aldermen. And uh, I felt this is a good opportunity to talk a little bit about this since we're actually voting on the agenda item. Uh, as I said earlier this evening before we were on camera, the difference between a 4-1 negative in planning and zoning and a 3-0 in municipal services was the, were the number of changes that took place in that week. Uh, I don't think if anything changed, you would have had the 3-0 vote. So to answer the concerns by how you can go from 4-1 to 3-0, there were the significant changes that we felt that we saw on the part of the developer. The other thing, too, if you actually look at the, uh, and maybe the planning and zoning would have been different, but there were four people absent that night. There were only five that were there. So the 4 1 vote reflects five people and not the nine that actually comprise that committee. But that, that, that doesn't matter. I mean, it was a 4 to 1. I just wanted to explain why the 3 0. Uh, the other thing is, um, in his presentation, Mr. Swanson, and maybe, he, maybe he'd want to say something about this tonight, indicated to us that the difference between 26 properties and 20, uh, the reason for that has to do with his development costs. And I believe he, he mentioned $1.1 or $1.2 million in terms of how that would be uh, divided among 26 versus 20 homes. Uh, and maybe he wants to mention that again tonight. That was something we, we considered. Actually, the Mr. Donner was here that night and asked if that information would be shared. Uh, Mr. Gombeck requested that information from Mr. Swanson. We all received a copy of that this week, I believe. Didn't we not, Dan? That's and correct. And Christopher Burke looked at that, and Christopher Burke Engineering uh, basically concurred that those costs were legitimate costs. Correct. In terms of the $1.1 or the $1.2 million. And that was something that weighed on, on my mind as well. Uh, 
as Alderman Belke said, and, and I, I love the trees and I love the um, being able to maintain the trees, but there is going to be probably a need for most of these trees to come down anyway with regard to this development. And I love trees and, and I like the greenery, but at the same time, uh, I don't see how you're going to be able to build 20 or 26 homes and not take down the majority of those trees that are there. Uh, I think Dan has answered the questions with regard to the street. I think he's answered the, the questions with regard to the, the right of way. Um, those have satisfied me as well. The idea of, um, you know, and again, I guess I'm also thinking about Mr. Gardner as well and as Alderman MacGyver has said, he's, he's been an individual that we've seen before this council a number of times with conceptual plans. I don't think anything's ever reached this stage before. But we've seen conceptual plans, and, and, and a lot of them have been nice, but they've been either too dense or they've been something that this council could not approve. I, and this development appears to be something that I think would meet the needs of that property. As, as we discussed last week at Municipal Services, this is a transitional uh, development. You have a shopping center, you have uh, this development, and then you have the, the homes to the to the south and and I think it's a nice transitional development. I wish there were fewer homes. I wish uh, as the residents would like that you could put 20 there or you could put 25 there. But I also have to understand that I have a developer who has costs and, and as far as the gentleman who made the comment this is about money, this is about making money. Well, if Mr. Swanson was doing this out of the goodness of his heart, he wouldn't be a good businessman. It is about making money. It's about developing a piece of property and making money. And I feel like I need to answer one other thing that was brought up, and this is the gentleman who went to the microphone first with the comment that the Municipal Service Committee meeting last week seemed to be orchestrated. Uh, first of all, I never met Mr. Swanson until last Monday. I never had a conversation with him before last Monday. Nothing about that meeting was orchestrated. I realize we live in a time where people sometimes doubt the transparency of their government, but I can assure you nothing was orchestrated last Monday night. That was a pure response to the presentation and to the comments of the residents, and I really felt the need to say that after that comment was made. Alderman Mac MacGyver? This is like point-counterpoint. Um, first of all, I, I just did the, the quick math on the difference in development costs spread over 20, between 26 homes and 20 homes, and it's about $13,000 a home. So if you're talking about a $350,000 home, that's, you know, 13000 on a 350000 So I don't think that's honestly a make or break as far as making a decision to live there. If you want to live there, I don't think that that would, you know, if anything, I think it would be you're getting more for the bang for the buck with a larger lot, being able to build a larger home, and I think you'd be able to absorb that cost. Um, my other question would be why, with all these changes, and um, Alderman Marquez made the point that, um, you know, it could have had a different outcome with the commission. Why didn't it go back to the commission? Um, could it have, or is that just not our policy? It's not our policy, and there was no reason for it. Well, it sounds like there could have been. I mean, c considering this, you know, if if there's a feeling that these were significant changes that were made and we did check with the city attorney whether whether or not these were significant changes that would require us to go back to the planning zoning commission they were not significant changes uh, and that's where we basically had the opportunity to uh, craft an additional developer agreement and those were some of the of the conditions that were brought out from the planning and zoning commission comments okay so we don't have to but could we have if we want if we so chose to do so sure because it seems like I don't know there's this seems to be a rush job all of a sudden and you know given the fact that there are residents that are going to be impacted that this is a rezoning let's not lose sight of that rezoning is a big deal because I've gone through rezoning and it you know it, it impacted my quality of life for sure you know if I had known what I'd known before I bought my house where I bought it I wouldn't have bought it there um, but again that was Woodridge and I you know it's hard to fight the fight against another city um, and then there's, of course, you know, the, the, vari you know, the variances, but I think the biggest issue is the, just the, the change of what we had planned. I mean, we had, it was our master plan. I mean, it's our rezoning that we're, we're rezoning. I mean, we, re we zoned it, you know, R1 to begin with for a reason, and now we're making that change. So 
those were my last comments, I promise. And I'm, I apologize also to um, the residents that were at the meeting and that, that I couldn't attend because both my kids had surgery that particular day, so I was home with them. Um, otherwise, I would have been at the meeting that, that, after, that evening, so. If there's no other comments, uh, the roll, please. Shower? Aye. <coughs> Marquez? Aye. Belke? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Kenny? No. MacGyver? No. Seifert? Aye. Five ayes and two nays. The motion has been approved. Uh, let's move to questions, comments, and announcements. Uh, they can be of a general nature. Do any of the aldermen have a com uh, question? Uh, yes, question, comments, and announcements. Then I'd like to open it up to the audience. Uh, yes, you. yes, go ahead. Uh, the last street meetings, Mayor, you, you and I will be at uh, Brookhaven Shopping Center on this coming sa co this coming Saturday. Can you believe that already? That's and we're going to be with Santa Claus, so Santa I guess Claus everybody better show up. 10 and noon um, on this Saturday, and then uh, the, th um, the 20th and the 13th, uh, Eisenhower uh, Choir will be doing Christmas carols for Brookhaven. Magical singers, yes. Alderman Marquez? Uh, Madam Mayor, I know that that was something that you and Alderman Kenny were going to be at. I was asked by several of the business owners there if there was going to be more than one alderman. So I was under the impression that several of us could be there. I realize that's your ward and the mayor was going to be there. But uh, <laughs> the hair care and the... I'm sorry? Yeah, several of us were invited by... I want to meet Santa. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> You're so sitting. I, I, I announced it. I announced it. <laughs> I, I don't want to violate I didn't the ask you to leave. I didn't ask you to leave the room when I announced it. <laughs> we, we, we always have to worry about the open meetings act. I yes. know, but you know, several of us would like to be there Saturday morning. Come on down. Don't want to steal your thunder. I yeah, come on down. I'd like to open up the uh, floor to anyone in the audience who wants to address the council. Okay. Just a couple last comments. Uh, first off, Mayor, you are right. Uh, and Dan, I'd like to ask on 75th, are they going to warranty that asphalt they're putting in since there's been the frost already. Do you want to get that microphone closer to you? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the, Thank question, you. the question was, just in case the residents at home didn't hear, was whether or not the asphalt that has been laid down on 75th Street, whether the county will warranty on it, will warranty it due to the conditions that it's been put down under. The answer is yes. I don't have all the specifics as far as uh, the liabilities and who's bonded for what. But typically, it is a one-year guarantee, yes. Okay, because, I mean, it, yeah, if, if the ground is frozen, you are right, Mayor. It probably will come up. It will come up. Um, second, I would like to thank you, Dan, for working with me on the lights on 75th. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, just two other comments. Um, I know there was discussions about the Planning Commission and the Municipal Service Commission. And, yes, it was like night and day. I wish you would have got together and worked out some of these differences um, because there were comments made at meetings that I really didn't appreciate. Uh, I don't think that's w the committees really worked well together. And I think a lot of this could have been done better had we had kind of cooperation between the zoning and the municipal committee. Um, I know there were comments made about both committees. Um, Lastly, I just hope that when we do get this developed that we remember that this is Darien. It's supposed to be a nice place to live. And cutting a couple lots and making things the right way, I don't think that's too much to ask. Because everybody here in, that, in this room, when you moved here, you looked at that. And I don't think we should forget that. That's one of the reasons we came here to Darien. And we didn't come here just to get a thrown in subdivision for a quick buck. And I think even if he asked the owner of the property, he would agree with that statement. So thank you, and thank you all for your time and, and uh, effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else want to address the council? Then I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman MacGyver, seconded by Alderman Belke. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>